Hello, everybody. Um, I'm joined tonight by uh, Delith, who is the undergraduate uh, senior course rep in the business school. Um, one of the people I've worked closely with uh, in the course rep team. I'm the, I'm the postgraduate um, senior course rep in the business school. I'll just hand over to Delith to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Delith. I'm third year studying business and finance. Um, and course rep and senior course rep. Awesome. Right, so let's uh, let's get going. Um, main issues, what are the main issues that you've had students coming to you about, would you say? Um, I think the main issues at the moment are that they're getting a lot of reading um, sort of late in the day where they don't have actually time to read it before the lectures. Um, and also um, a lot of feedback is all about sort of um, the feeling that they're getting more work than they used to. Um, they feel like they're sort of these pre-lectures are giving them additional work, which we wouldn't have had previously. Right, so essentially doubling up. So you have to watch a lecture and then watch it again, like yeah. on the day. Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've heard that from a couple of people as well. Mm. Um, has, has, have there been any like suggested solutions or any questions asked to lecturers about this? Yeah, we have approached the um, issue with the um, sort of materials being released quite late before the lecture um, to ask for them at least a week before so everyone has, you know, time to do it when they are free. Um, yeah. Some of them have been given them a day before which isn't working. Um, and then for the pre-lectures we have suggested maybe they're, that, that they're shorter. We're not suggesting that they cancel them out altogether but possibly shorter. Um, and that they go in more in depth in the actual live lecture. Yeah, that makes sense. So just get an overview of what you're going to be covering, and then and yeah. then you can ask more questions and and go into more depth on that on the day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, that, has that been implemented now? Then are they going to start releasing them? I think there are some still some teething issues, um, but we yeah. have been able to approach the school, and they've been very supportive. So. We're, we are working on it. Not, it's not fully in, fully working as yet, but we're getting there, I think. Making some progress, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. That's cool. Um, have, you, have you had many people uh, talking to you about um, struggling to sort of like find motivation because they're stuck at their computers all day? Yeah, I think because um, quite a lot of students are working part-time as well and they're kind of working on the computer, then they're studying on the computer and they're researching on the computer. Um, so it's bit, they are feeling a bit sort of screened out um, as well with like volunteering and things. I think things like that suffering because, um, you know, people don't want to then go and volunteer and have to be on a screen again. And um, so I think it's having sort of an impact um, on the social aspect of things as well. Because you mentioned sort of joining someone on a Zoom after. They're like, oh no, I've been on Zoom all day. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be on a computer again. Um, so everyone's a bit sort of screened out. I think. Yeah, sorry for bringing you on Zoom after a day on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally get that. Um, mm -hmm. I think for me, that's why it, it's quite important that the university does try and put on some more in-person lectures because it just breaks it up a bit for people, yeah. doesn't it? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, when you when you when you're in essentially a bed sit, which is what students in halls are in, it's hard. Mm. It's it's not nice to just be in your bedroom slash yeah. office um, all day long. It, yeah, mm. Mm. it's it's a bit better now. We've got uh, we're out of lockdown, and I think people yeah. are going to libraries to study and things like that, which is yeah. cool. But yeah, yeah. My first I think it's pretty much the same for the home students though. Because like, you know, being at home um, for me and for other students I've spoken to at home, they feel like they're, you know, usually we would get to go out to go to university and then we'd go to, you know, we'd go out to go to work. But at the moment, home is work, it's study, it's everything. Yeah. And so you don't feel like you get away from, from being in that environment. So there's not much of a change in between what we're doing, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything in one place is strange, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, get a bit get a bit of cabin fever, I think. That's probably <laughs> yeah. the right word for it, isn't it? 
have you, have you have you tried like doing anything or brought anything into your routines to try and sort of get you away a bit or is it, is it yeah different? I do I go for a walk before work so what I call work or study so I go for a walk first thing in the morning yeah. just so I feel like I'm actually going somewhere to do something because otherwise it just you know you get up you go straight to your desk doesn't feel right you know so I do try and go for a little walk first and then get to my computer yeah I think that's quite important isn't it to to mm -hmm. have a bit of a morning routine where you get up say have a coffee go for a wander get some fresh yeah. air yeah and, and I think um, not staying in your pajamas is a good good advice yeah yeah although I've got a new onesie and it's so <laughs> I'm rarely out of that at the moment. <laughs> or even change, even change into clean pajamas, so you're physically getting ready to yeah, yeah. to tackle the day. So, so you feel yeah. fresh. Yeah. Fresh and ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, have you got, have you had any other concerns from students that you can think of? Um, I think they're obviously concerned about the sort of marking criteria and the concerns that they're not getting the same engagement um and i think that's kind of you know some of us who have obviously were here last term um you know we're able to see how it went and we know that it actually went okay um but having well, last term we just literally just had the lectures yeah. um, online we didn't have the pre-lectures or the additional bits that we're getting now um so I think people are feeling like they're playing a bit of a catch up all the time. And then when it gets to getting an assignment or an exam, they feel like they haven't even finished doing the reading because they're getting so much on. Um, so I think that's kind of a worry for everyone, really, that they're not, they're not going to catch up prior to having an exam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, that is quite worrying, isn't it? Um, yeah. there's, a hell, there's a hell of a lot of... Um, well, I've got like a stack of books like like this for mm. the three modules I'm doing, and like you say with the yeah. pre-reading and everything, it it's it's yeah. tough to um it's tough to get it all in. And mm. what like for me, um, this is one of the things I'm working on at, at the minute is trying to build sort of a, a collaboration, uh, an engagement campaign, um, which I've been working with the unit one of the university's um business tutors. Uh, over and essentially it's like an entrepreneurial workshop you can book onto and I've been running my ideas with the campaign through with one of the guys at the business school and um, mm. so I'm just looking at how we can get people more engaged and um, talking to each other and, and, and building connections with people on on, court, on our courses because yeah. because we haven't had any in person you're not like having those interactions with people when you come out of a lecture you're not chatting to people and then building and creating study groups yeah um, so I, th I think that's one of the one of the key things because you learn from your peers don't you like yeah, you learn you a lot from the people you study with a fine example of that was like last year when i was asking people you know have you done your bea and they were like what's the bea you know um and i was like oh i'm nearly finished now and they were like I haven't even started and you know it's kind of that participation thing I think people are missing out on because if if I was to say to someone you know oh you're gonna do this they'd be like oh why do I need it and then we have that conversation and be like oh yeah that's a good idea actually I might go on that then um or you know if you had an hour off in between I'd say oh I'm going to this workshop you're gonna come along and they'd be like oh yeah yeah actually I will you know um so I think that people are missing out on the extracurricular and I think that's vital, you know, um, I've learned so much from doing the BEA award. Um, I completed it in my second year, so I didn't have the pressure this year. Um, but I'm still attending workshops and things because it's still a learning curve, you know, it's still additional stuff that we're learning. Um, yeah. it, it is hard to fit things in, I know, but still, you know, I still want to learn those additional things because it's, it's a package you want to come away with, not just a degree, you know. Yeah, the, the, for people that are watching this, the BEA award is like an employability skills award and there's various workshops that you would book onto and you get like experience points, don't you? Because um, I'm, I'm currently doing that as well. And pretty much everybody I've asked about, even like the postgraduate students that have been here since January, which is longer than me, like they didn't know what it was. 
Um, and that, that's one of the things that I'm going to look at addressing in this campaign is signposting and, yeah. and why people aren't aware of information. Because mm. I, think, I think a lot of it, um, we get information from all different areas. So we get, get, get it from social media, get it on emails. Um, mm. I, put, I had to point something out a couple of days ago, actually. Um, student union emails from the Undeb account had all gone into my junk folder and I hadn't checked mm -hmm. it. And I'd, yeah, me too. Yeah. And I'd missed, I'd missed loads of stuff. Luckily, I, it was stuff that I covered in meetings that I had because of like the rep position and the councillor position. Yeah. But a lot of students yeah. aren't seeing that information. So um, I sent an email through for them to try and get that sorted with IT. Um, but things like that, um, just little things. I think it's just a, like a, an accumulation of um, like... I want to say it is essentially inefficient communication channels and um, people just aren't getting the information that, that they need. Uh, yeah, I think as well, it's um, a lot of individuals aren't really engaging with emails because it's, you know, they've got so much going on anyway. They've got so much learning. Yeah. Um, if you were to actually read through every single email you get, because we do get a lot, mm. um, would we have the time, you know, have people got the time to read all these should we just get one monthly bulletin or something, you know, where um, this is, you know, I know we've got the website and people go into it, um, but unless they know of the things, they're not going to go looking for them. Um, so I, I just think there must be an easier way of channeling all that information. Um, even if the lecturers were to put something at the start of a lecture or something, you know, something as simple as that, where they will pick it up and yeah. they will have a look, you know. That, that started happening now with some of the information from the student union. I don't know if you've had it yeah. in your lectures. They're doing like a lecture. Yeah, I had one. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I brought this up the other day. Um, essentially, you're sending information to people from loads of different directions. You've got emails, you've got social media, you've got the university website, the student union website. You've got all the society mm -hmm. websites. But the only time you've really got everyone's attention is in the online lectures. So mm -hmm. like having, having that thing at the start of the lecture, any shout outs, any important information, it gets recorded mm -hmm. as well. So the people yeah. that don't watch it live, when they re-watch it, that information is there. So I think yeah. that, like while we're at online, I think that is one of the best ways to get information across. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree, definitely. Definitely, because they, so, you know, they, people do need to get this information, and they're not always going to have time to read their emails. And I think, you know, adding it to a lecture just makes it more sensible, really. Yeah, because there is there is quite a few things for us to keep on top of, isn't there? Because you've got your blackboard announcements and notifications every day, your emails. Yeah. Um, see, you're you're in a similar position to me. You have like worked before, um, so I'm kind of. I'm kind of used to being a computer, yeah. being on top of emails, but a lot of people will have never used emails mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. a sense of like productive way for work or study. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, like a, essentially a bit of a, a culture change, isn't it? And yeah, definitely. I found myself last year sort of like being the, the, the guru of the group, you know, the person who passed all the information on because it seemed to be that I was the only one that read the emails, you know, and yeah, yeah. it's, um, it is important and I think, you know, maybe if there was a class at the beginning of the year, maybe to show them how to manage their emails, how to put them into folders, you know, um, how to identify if there's good information in that email or not, or what to look out for, you know, there's nothing like that. Um, and like you say, if they've never experienced these emails coming in constantly before, um, I'm not sure they're going to know what to do with all of them, to be honest. No. And especially they're not going to know to look in the junk folders in case there's yeah. important information in there. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. But so I don't, I don't know about you, but I, um, I've got like a Blackboard page for IT services. And yeah. they, they did some um, sort of like software guides in, in Welcome Week. Um, yeah. But... Even though they're on Blackboard, I don't think a lot of people know that they're there. So, it's I think that's another another lecture signposting thing we we, we need definitely. to work on, isn't it? definitely. And yeah. just even signposting to IT, you know, if they're not sure of something, um, just that they know where to go. You know, um, a lot of students are asking each other, 
um, and a lot of information can be missed in that method, you know? Yeah. Have, uh, have you set up any, or are you a part of any sort of study groups for your course at the moment? I'm very lucky because I've already established channels from year one and two. Yeah. Um, so I've got a good group of students that we do communicate with each other. We ask questions if one person's not sure. Um, you know, we've got sort of a good group going and that's sort of through our own personal channels. Um, and it works well for us, you know, it always has worked well. Um, and we don't see each other, you know, we've not seen each other this year at all. Um, but the relationship is already there. But my concern is in first year, what, what are they doing? How are they meeting, you know, students on the same course? How are they getting these conversations done? That, uh, and my, my presumption is that they're not, you know? Yeah, I, um, can, I can tell you from starting in September, like we didn't even have like a, uh, any sort of group set up where we could communicate with the other people on our course. I'm still waiting for that to be set up, actually. Um, yeah which is quite frustrating apparently it are really busy but i requested a teams group for our courses in the business school like over a month ago now i think yeah. Uh, but yeah essentially first years and postgraduate students who are here for a year arrived in september as far as like my experience talking to people goes and they had no platform um to communicate yeah. with each other on and because a lot of people weren't even having in-person lectures they don't know anybody on the course. I know maybe two or three people that are doing the same course as me. And I'm like, you know what I'm like, I, I just talk, I just chat all the time. I'm trying to find stuff out, but it's, it's difficult. It's difficult yeah. to yeah. find that. You know, if you're proactive and, and you're proactively doing all this, um, I think that shows the difficulty, how hard it actually is to make these connections. Yeah. Um, you being the person you are, and if you're finding it difficult, I'm sure the rest of the students are finding it really difficult, you know? Yeah. Um, so it is kind of, it's so important to sort something out so people can get together. Yeah. How, how highly would you rate the importance of having those channels? Like you said, you've already built up over the, over I the years. I think it's vital highly... because it's part of your studies. You know, you learn so much from each other. Um, you know, if you're stuck with something or you've missed something, you can have that conversation. Um, Without it, you wouldn't feel part of being in university even, you know, because yeah. um, it's It's not just about the study, it's about the social aspect. It's about being with students doing the same thing, the same interests, you know, it's about learning from each other. It's not just about an online lecture, it's so much more. And the people who are just having the online lectures, they're going to be missing out on so much information. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. I think it's so important to have the connections with people studying what you're studying. Um, mm. Yeah, and that again, that's something that I'm going to be that I'm trying to address now with a few things, and, and this campaign is going to yeah. look at addressing too. Um, hopefully, hopefully, we do get some more in-person lectures coming on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw actually. Um, I had an email before uh, saying that all in-person lectures are stopping from, I think it was the 8th of December, um, right. prior to Christmas, I think, to try and control, like, COVID, yeah. you know, before students go home. Um, so it's reducing the risk of people people getting it and passing it on before they go back to their families. Um, but, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's I don't I don't know whether I, I agree with that approach, to be honest, because I, I just think it's so important that they do everything they can to get us in when they can get us in. Yeah, because we do, I mean, when we do go to the live lectures anyway, or the, the classroom lectures where, you know, we do stay the two metres apart, we are wearing our masks, we are careful, we are, split, you know, spread around. Um, so it is really, really important, you know, I don't think anything's going to change why you know why cancel them because we're not doing anyone any harm um you know we're being safe we're being cautious obviously the people who are you know oh you're breaking up oh sorry it's all right i can hear you again now <laughs> 
yeah so it's like we're going to the supermarket and suddenly aren't we you know we're we're doing we are out now the lectures will affect anything really they should just carry on until yeah. we finish yeah they've they've set so the lecture i did today um the whole room set up like spaced apart there's markers on the floor where the desks are um when we finished the lecture it was quite amusing actually a guy came in and he, he looked like he was dressed like a beekeeper and he had like a little water pistol thing and he was coming in to like sanitize the whole room you know after we left so they've they've yeah. they've got good they've got good like procedures in place to keep us safe um i think yeah. they should from my opinion should be trying to maximize how, how much we get in in because i haven't met a single student yet that says they're happy with just online like most yeah. students are desperate to get into the university yeah yeah Absolutely. yeah i think it, we're all careful enough we're all sensible enough you know to to be careful because none of us want to take it home to our families um i just i don't see quite see why it's behind but um you know we could we could ever be tested before going home it would be the same effect you know yeah, yeah. Um, so i don't yeah yeah there was mentions of that as well but i can't mm -hmm. I can't quote the email because I only briefly skimmed over it, but yeah. Um, yeah, trying times, isn't it? We've just got to try and like work together, haven't we, just to, to um, Definitely. make it as good as we possibly can with the, what we've, tools we've got. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, right, I, I think maybe we should end it. Have you got any final thoughts, Stella, for going forward? Um. I think final thoughts would be just to kind of not bombard us with additional work, um, give us a quality to our lecture, um, and you know, sort of just better communication. Really, I think that's about it. Yeah, no, I agree. Communication channels is is what's really important when you don't have the ability to to meet face to face. So yeah, that that's something we need to we need to get a grip of. But yeah, yeah, awesome. Sorry. Right, well, thank you very much for joining me um, on on Friday late afternoon. I really appreciate that. Um, no problem. I will, I will see you again soon. Thank you, Dallas. Okay, thank you.